A nature walk adventure. Learning English outdoors. Hey Beatrix, isn't it a beautiful day for a nature walk? It really is, Richard. I'm so glad we decided to do this. The weather is perfect. Absolutely. So, have you been on many nature walks before? Not as many as I'd like. But I do enjoy them whenever I get the chance. What about you? Oh, I try to go hiking at least once a month. It's my way of disconnecting and recharging. That's a great habit. Nature has so much to offer. What's your favorite part about hiking? I love the tranquility of it all. The sounds of the birds, the rustle of leaves underfoot, and the fresh air. It's refreshing. And you? For me, it's the views. Reaching the top of a hill and looking out over the landscape. It's breathtaking. Indeed it is. Oh, look at that bird over there. Do you know what kind it is? I think that's a robin. They're pretty common around here. Have you seen any wildlife on your hikes? Yes, quite a few times. Deer, foxes, and once I even saw a badger. Wow, that must have been exciting. I've only ever seen deer from a distance. It was. Every hike brings something new. That's what I love about it. You never know what you'll encounter. True. And it's a great way to learn and practice English too, talking about all these experiences. Absolutely. Describing the scenery, the animals, and the whole adventure really helps with language skills. Speaking of which, I've been trying to improve my vocabulary. Can you teach me some nature-related words today? Of course. Let's start with flora and fauna. Flora refers to plant life, and fauna to animal life in a region. Flora and fauna. Got it. This is fun. What else can you teach me? How about terrain? It refers to the landscape, whether it's rocky, wooded, or mountainous. Terrain, that's a useful word. This is making the hike even more enjoyable. I'm glad to hear that. Learning in nature, there's nothing quite like it. Definitely. I'm looking forward to our next nature walk already. Me too, Beatrix. Me too. Let's make this a regular thing. Agreed. And let's keep learning and exploring together. Dive into English, swimming conversations. Hi Beatrix, how are you doing today? Hi Richard. I'm doing well, thanks. Just excited about the swimming competition next week. How about you? Oh, I'm doing great. I've been looking forward to this competition. Have you been training much? Yes, I've been in the pool every day. It's been tough but fun. Swimming really is a great workout. What's your favorite stroke? I'm a big fan of freestyle. It's fast and efficient. But I've been trying to improve my butterfly stroke. It's challenging but rewarding. How about you? I love the backstroke. It's relaxing and helps me keep a steady pace. Plus, looking up at the sky while swimming is quite a view. That sounds peaceful. Speaking of which, how do you prepare mentally for a race? Good question. I usually visualize the race in my mind and focus on my breathing. 
It helps to calm my nerves. And you? Similar to you, I visualize and also listen to some motivating music before the race. It pumps me up. Music is a great idea. Do you have any tips for improving swimming speed? Well, I focus a lot on my technique and make sure I'm doing strength training as well. Consistency is key. How do you keep improving? I work closely with my coach to tweak my technique, and I also watch videos of professional swimmers to learn from their form. That's smart. Watching professionals can be really inspiring. Do you follow any specific diet for your training? Definitely. I eat lots of lean protein and carbohydrates for energy. Staying hydrated is crucial too. What about you? Pretty much the same. Nutrition plays a huge role in performance. Oh, and getting enough sleep is also a priority for me. Absolutely, rest is part of the training too. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the competition. Best of luck! Thanks, Beatrix. Good luck to you too. Let's give it our best shot. Everyday English. Learn to talk about time of day. Does Oscar eat breakfast every morning? Yes, Oscar eats breakfast every morning. What time does Emma wake up in the morning? Emma wakes up at 7 a.m. in the morning. Is it sunny in the morning in California? Yes, it is often sunny in the morning in California. What does Oscar do at noon? Oscar usually has lunch at noon. Does Emma work in the office at noon? Yes, Emma works in the office at noon. Is it busy in London at noon? Yes, it is usually busy in London at noon. What do Oscar and Emma do in the evening? Oscar and Emma often watch TV in the evening. Is it cold in the evening in Canada? Yes, it can be very cold in the evening in Canada. Do restaurants in Italy open in the evening? Yes, restaurants in Italy open in the evening. Do Oscar and Emma sleep well at night? Yes, they usually sleep well at night. Is it safe to walk at night in Tokyo? Yes, it's generally safe to walk at night in Tokyo. Are the stars visible at night in the countryside? Yes, the stars are often visible at night in the countryside. What does Oscar do during the day? Oscar works at his job during the day. Does Emma go to school every day? Yes, Emma goes to school every day. Is the weather warm during the day in Spain? Yes, the weather is often warm during the day in Spain. How many days are in a week? There are seven days in a week. Does Emma play tennis every week? Yes, Emma plays tennis once a week. Do Oscar and Emma travel on the weekends? Sometimes Oscar and Emma travel on the weekends. How many months are in a year? There are 12 months in a year. How many days are in a year? There are 365 days in a year, except in a leap year. Do Oscar and Emma take a vacation every year? Yes, they take a vacation once a year. Will Oscar and Emma live in France for their whole lifetime? No, they will not live in France for their whole lifetime, just a few years. Is it important to learn English in your lifetime? Yes, it is very important to learn English in your lifetime. I hope these examples are useful for your English learning. Thanks for watching.